my darling extraterrestrials. I am Kim. This is Desmos and Velicor. And it's been a minute, I know. But because I took that YouTube break, I was able to read 10 books this month. 10. That's five times as many books as I read last month. This is crazy to me. So I wanted to thank you guys for sticking with me through this. And I also wanted to say hi to my new subscribers. Hi, guys. Uh, welcome to the party. The cat's in the corner. <laughs> Does anybody else do that? Like, you you arrive at the party and you immediately locate the animal that you're allowed to pet? Anybody else? Okay, that might just be me. Okay, we're moving on. This has been a tangent. Now on to the books. <laughs> first up was Labyrinth Lost by Zoraida Cordova, the first in the Brooklyn Bruja series. This book follows Alex, a young woman who is so terrified of the power she might inherit that when the time comes, she tries to banish it. But instead, she banishes her entire family to a hell dimension called Los Lagos. Hiring a young brujo named Nova as her guide, she embarks on a quest to get them all back. This one is hella gay and I love it. <laughs> then I finally read Princess Princess Ever After by Katie O'Neill. This one is a very short graphic novel in which heroic Princess Amira saves Princess Sadie from her tower prison and then they go on a bunch of cool adventures and then they fall in love and get married. <laughs> Hella gay. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Bruja Born by Zoraida, Zoraida Cordova. One day I'm going to get this right. Um, it's the second in the Brooklyn Bruja series. This one follows Alex's sister Lula, the healer of the family, as she deals with some undiagnosed PTSD from, you know, being held captive in a hell dimension. And then there's a car crash that kills most of her classmates. And she maybe sort of creates some zombies? So there's that. <laughs> then I got my hands on Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor. This one is the much-awaited second volume in the Dreamer duology. I don't know what it's called. The Strange the Dreamer duology? This one follows Sarai and Laszlo, the God Spawn, the Citizens of Weep, and the Ferrangi delegates. As they piece back together, what's left? Everybody is basically careening into tying off loose ends mode. Minya and Thion both get amazing, compelling, dynamic character arcs, and things long buried start to emerge into the light. I seriously cannot recommend this series enough, guys. Next up was Vicious by V.E. Schwab. Thank you so much to Robin who suggested this one for me because you were so right, okay? You were just so right. If you like dark, powerful analyses on what makes a villain, this is your book. <laughs> Eli and Victor were friends in college. They were working together on a thesis about the genesis of EOs, or extraordinaries. People with abilities. Their theory? That the right cocktail of circumstances, fear, death, and sheer force of will, could create an EO. And the only way to prove this theory was to test it on themselves. But Eli reneged on the deal, took his powers, and refused to help Victor get his, thus sparking a deep-seated rivalry between two psychopaths with slightly different views on how EOs should be treated in society, or if they should be allowed to exist at all. So that one was awesome. And then we take a sharp right into Fangirl. You guys were so right. I don't know why I held out from reading this one for so long. I just, it's kind of hard to describe, which is maybe why I didn't think I would like it. Fangirl is a coming of age story. Kath, who is utterly afraid of change, is starting college this semester. And slowly she's going to figure out that change, while inevitable, is not necessarily the end of everything. <laughs> Best title of the month goes to A Lady's Guide to Petticoats and Piracy by Mackenzie Lee. Several months after the events of Gentleman's Guide, we find Felicity Montague in Edinburgh trying her damnedest to get into medical school. Any medical school. She is met with derision. And in the face of an utterly unacceptable marriage proposal, she flees to her brother and his husband in London, living in joyful squalor. She petitions the board of a medical school in London for admittance, and she is laughed out of their chambers. And that is when she decides to take desperate measures. 
This involves crashing a wedding, robbing a museum, and going on the adventure of a lifetime. For me, this book was about finding yourself regardless of the confines of society, and seriously, y'all need to read it. My first reread of the month was Darkest Part of the Forest by Holly Black. I picked this up because I wanted to reread The Cruel Prince, but Goodreads won't let me read the same book twice in a year and still have it count towards my challenge. Figured that out last year. <laughs> but damn, my rewards-based goal setting. Ugh, but I never regret rereading this book. This one is about a young girl who wants to be a knight and a young boy who wants to fall in love. And they live in a town where fairies hunt the woods and murder incautious tourists for sport. Holly Black writes the best fairy tales, seriously. Next was Strange Grace by Tessa Grattan. I read Queens of Innisleer a couple months ago, and I wanted to see how her adult style differed from her YA style. And really, they, they don't. It's just less wordy. Less wordy, equally idea-y. If that makes sense. Oh, you get to come be in a video now. I've got a kitty. Yeah, see, look. Look at all the fun things. This one is about a blessed little town where no one dies before their time, no one's crops get sick, and the exact right amount of rain falls every year. This is because every seven years, they send their best boy into the woods to be hunted by the devil. But this time, something's wrong with the bargain. This time, the bargain ends too soon. Witches, saints, devils, secrets. Who could ask for more? Also, polyamory. The three main characters, totally in love with each other. A quarter of the way into this one, I said, if this book doesn't end in polyamory, I'm gonna be so mad. I called it. And to bring us home, I reread The Wizard of Earthsea by Ursula K. Le Guin. A bunch of people were asking me what I was reading, and only one of them had read it, which amazed me. It's classic fantasy. But I guess, I mean, I only heard about it four years ago because Alex recommended it to me. So, but still, it's told as if a bard were singing an epic. Basically, a young man called Sparrowhawk is found to be powerful in the ways of magic, and he sets himself on a path towards wizardry. But on his journey, his pride overcomes him. He attempts something he should not. He wakes something better left sleeping, and it hunts him. Oh my god, this is why, this is what happens when I write my videos beforehand. Pros, they make sense. Cons, I start to sound like I'm in the intro to a miniseries. In a world. Okay, okay, <laughs> that is my 10 books for the month of October. I'm sorry for the lack of updates. I will try to get a few more up in November. Wish me luck. And don't forget to leave book recs in the comments. I really do need them. <laughs> Seriously, come talk to me about books. Aviento. Thank you.